Rolling Stone was sued for defamation over a story that they published back in 2014 regarding a rape on campus. That was actually the headline of the story detailing uh, the alleged gang rape of a student by the name of Jackie. Now, it turned out that Rolling Stone magazine did not corroborate uh, some of the claims made by Jackie and then the Washington Post. In addition to Columbia University, picked the story apart and found that it not only lacked journalistic integrity, it also uh, did, the, the writer didn't do enough to uh, ensure that Jackie's claims had any weight behind them. Now, throughout the article, uh, there was an administrator by the name of Nicole Aramo mentioned, and it made it seem as though she was the villain. She was the one who tried to brush Jackie's claims of rape under the rug. But it turns out that she didn't really do anything wrong, and she took the proper precautions to ensure that she went to the police and reported everything to the cops and that an investigation took place. Now, in this defamation suit, the jury found liability on the part of Rolling Stone its parent company, Wenner Media, and the author of the article, Sabrina Rubin Erdley. Lawyers for Ms. Aramo uh, argue that Rolling Stone and the writer were reckless in their reporting and editing, and that Ms. Erdley uh, deliberately avoided following leads that could have disproved the story. Now, keep in mind that the person who brought this lawsuit, the administrator, is a public figure. And whenever a public figure is involved in a defamation suit or brings forward a defamation suit, the standard of evidence is much higher, okay? And so they have to prove something known as actual malice. The actual malice standard, which requires a plaintiff who is a public figure to prove that the publisher knew it had published falsehoods or acted in a reckless disregard of its truth or falsity. So apparently they provided enough evidence uh, to meet that standard. So. I'm torn by this story, and not because um, there is a question as to whether Rolling Stone did the right thing or not. No, the story was terrible, uh, and they know it. Uh, they're the ones who said, "Hey, let's investigate ourselves." Not just investigate ourselves, like the BS investigations people normally do. They said, "Let's get an outside uh, entity, the Columbia University Journalism uh, School, which is very well esteemed." And they came in and they did a devastating report about all the things that they did wrong. And you know what happened? Uh, the plaintiffs used that report against them in the lawsuit. So Rolling Stone made the mistake of being honest here afterwards mm -hmm. and trying to actually fix their problems and it was used against them. So it was a terrible report by Rolling Stone and otherwise I think good to great publication and there aren't a lot of publications anymore left in the country that actually does investigative reporting and Rolling Stone does. And and so now it might destroy it. This she was suing for seven and a half million dollars. She won. They have not decided yet how much of that seven and a half million she's going to get. That's the next stage of the trial. But it, and then uh, there's another group that's suing the fraternity next. They haven't done that trial yet. They're suing for twenty five million dollars. If they both win and they both get twenty five seven and a half million dollars, <laughs> magazines don't make that much money anymore. It might bankrupt Rolling Stone. It might kill Rolling Stone. So. The jury's right. This was. I mean, look, actually, I, I don't. I trust the jury deliberated in a perfectly fine fashion. Let me put it that way. Because if I was on the jury, that actual malice standard is very hard, yes. and I'd have to yeah. really look at the, at the thing there. Did the Rolling Stone do it on purpose? They wanted to smear the dean. No way. I, you'd have a really hard time convincing me of that. Were they so recklessly negligent? That uh, they that there was that in, in essence it was actual malice. That's a super hard question. But the jury deliberated and they decided it was. I understand that. But now we're gonna now this hangs over everybody's head. And so now Gawker's out of business because of the Hulk Hogan thing. Yes, that was wrong. We disagree with them. What Rolling Stone them. was wrong. Okay, but are we gonna put out of business every uh, publication that gets one story wrong? Especially something like Rolling Stone that has a long, I mean Gawker and Rolling Stone shouldn't be compared because of the sort of long history of investigative journalism, expository journalism, you know, fluff journalism, all the things they do, they've done it well. I have a particular attachment to this case because it's my beloved alma mater, the University of Virginia, where it happened. I've been to parties at the Phi Psi fraternity house. Mm -hmm. um, and so I followed this, the case pretty, you know, pretty closely and everybody, including the jury, because they deliberated for quite a while, I mean for days, they 
everyone was stuck on the malice thing. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm sure you have more to say on that, but the, 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 the whole idea that you had to prove some kind of malice against Arama was sort of difficult to prove because it was their negligence and their irresponsibility that caused the malice. But can you interpret negligence into malice? I don't know. Can you, it's like why there's neg criminally negligent homicide and there's homicide. I, 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 that was the hardest part for me. But I, I think you're right, Cenk, is that they're probably going to give an award. I would imagine if the fraternity will have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, get some kind of retribution for this. Uh, and uh, but it, it's it's hard to it's hard to see the malice. I, I wasn't totally comfortable with the verdict, but I, I'm you know like you said, everybody in that room saw it much closer than I did. And I guess if they had to prove malice in an indirect way, they did it. I think the the. I agree with the jury's ruling, um, you know, based on what we know, and we don't have all the evidence that they saw, but we do know, you know, what the Washington Post provided uh, in terms of evidence of, of negligence in reporting, and yeah, it was negligent, and it, you know, destroyed the reputation of someone who didn't do anything wrong. In fact, it destroyed the reputations of several people who were part of this fraternity, right? And and they suffered consequences as a result of that. So. The, the consequences, though, for Rolling Stone, I don't agree with because while that reporter should not be employed by them anymore and while that article should be retracted, which it has been, there are so many incredible writers that work at Rolling Stone, that publish work at Rolling Stone that we desperately need. Matt Taibbi is one of them. And to think of this publication completely going under because of the terrible actions of one reporter. And editor, to be fair. And editor, to be fair. It wasn't just one person. There were, there were a few people behind this. Because of their actions, to see all of these other reporters and all these other people who have done great work um, suffer the consequences bothers me. But let's talk a little bit about the Washington Post because uh, we reported on this earlier when the story had broke, but I forgot about just just how egregious this story was, right? So an investigation by the Washington Post showed that aspects of Jackie's account were not true, including that no one in the fraternity matched the name or even the description she gave for the person who allegedly was the ringleader of her assault, a person that she described to friends at the time as her assailant was a complete fiction. In fact, a photo that she shared of her alleged attacker was actually of someone she knew from high school and who had attended a different school out of state. So that's why it's really important. I mean, I feel like it's journalism 101 to get both sides of the story, to interview as many people as possible. And if you're uncomfortable interviewing those who have been accused of raping her, which I don't think you should be, I think you should get a statement from them as well, you in the very least should find other people to corroborate these claims, whether it's her friends or other people that she may have talked to. Her friends later came forward and said, N no, she told us something completely different, this doesn't make sense. Again, journalism 101, you have to talk to more than one person to make sure you have a well-balanced story. So it, it gets actually a little worse than that, and so that's why you can see the jury could think that this was a reckless disregard for truth. Because when they go to talk to uh, Aramo, Aramo is the dean that we're talking about here. In the beginning, before we found out that the story was false, yeah, I mean, boy, did it hurt her reputation. Because in the article, they imply that she was trying to cover it up and brush it under the rug. In reality, Aramo had actually been very helpful to Jackie, the, the one who made up this whole story. And she had tried to find her help in every way. She had tried to help her to get to press charges. I mean, boy, was it a hatchet job on Aramo. So I, I understand why she brought the lawsuit to said At this point, by the way, no one thinks Aramo did the wrong thing. Everyone thinks Aramo is the hero of the story. Mm -hmm. So she's fine now. I mean, she's no longer at UVA, but she's. Yeah, she's I mean, I would be left, shocked yeah. if it, she could, if she had any trouble finding a job anywhere right. now because, was she, because of the redemption that she's gotten, et cetera. She was right all along. But that also leads to one of the better defenses that Rolling Stone had. They said, look, Jackie was a phenomenal liar. Uh, part of the reason we believed her, and yes, we were wrong, and we've admitted it seven times we were wrong, right? Is, is how good she how well she laid out that case. In fact, the person who believed her the most before us was Aramo. And Aramo believed Jackie completely. That's why she was trying to get her to file charges. And she uh, I think she might have even cried with her or yes. you know, and and tried to you know make sure that she was emotionally okay and physically okay. So they're like, look, she was a phenomenal liar. But that's why you've got to go and ask the accused because you can't just throw that out there without getting their side of the story and having them go, wait a minute, I've never met her in my life. 
right? And so, and we tell you guys every time we do these stories, an allegation doesn't mean it happened. It's just an allegation. Now, in a case like Cosby, where there are 50 allegations, well, that begins to weigh on your mind as to whether those allegations might have some uh, validity. But even within the Cosby story, we've told you almost every time. Now, that doesn't mean every one of those allegations, allegations is true, and I say that about the Trump allegations. So there's a lot of them, and, but it doesn't mean every one of them is true. Because there are some people looking for publicity, et cetera, right? Yeah, certainly there are. I mean, I, yeah, and people in defending Trump say that too. I, I, the people that I spoke to in, in North Carolina and Orlando talking about Trump, you know, I'll say, well, what about Bill Cosby? You know, he said, well, he's not running for president. And they did it when he wasn't trying to be anything. This guy's a billionaire and it, it's a good opportunity to do it. So they think people will find any reason not to believe, but, but going in and just believing is just as bad. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so finally, look, Jackie herself and then the editors that were in charge of this at Rolling Stone have done a great disservice to victims of sexual assault on campus. <coughs> because this then allows everybody else to go, oh yeah, they're all made up. And so the, the damage that Jackie and, and, and the others involved in the story did is s tremendous when it comes to the issue that they were supposedly bringing to light. You know who makes independent media possible? You guys. Because of you, we can actually do this show free of any outside influence. That's what makes us so strong. Become a member today. TYTnetwork.com slash join. You are the media.